Identifying restraint and handling. Define oh, restraint. restraint. Uh, well, okay. Uh, restraint is capture, handling, and keeping something in control. Levels of restraint are behavioral, psychological, physical, mechanical, and chemical. These can be used alone, but are usually used in conjunction with one another. Why do we restrain? We restrain for health checks, injuries, and illness checks, to move from one location to the other, for maintenance on exhibits, and education. Now let's talk about stress. Is the biological response elicited when an animal perceives a threat to its homeostasis? The threat is a stress-producing factor. Physical traits are temperature changes, sight, sounds, odor, hunger, and thirst. The psychological threat is anxiety, frustration, overcrowding, lack of social contact, and transport. Reactions vary by species and by individuals. Increased cortisol levels, gastrointestinal ulcers, decreased reproduction, and decreased metabolism, and interfere with immune system. Oh my god. Stress is stressful. But stress is normal. Too much stress is not normal. For the diagnosis, in order to check for increased cortisol levels, we check feces, urine, saliva, and blood. Real or perceived stress may cause reactions. So minimize stress to maximize safety. And now for the restraint plan. You should know the knowledge of species, the preferred restraint plan, and equipment and staff needed. Is everyone experienced and comfortable? Well, truthfully, the answer is... No. no. Safety concerns. Will it be safe for humans and for animals? You should know the capture techniques, release and recovery, and every restraint event is different, so there is no set plan. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. What to consider environment-wise? You have to consider the season, how hot or how cold it is, the terrain, the exhibit, and check your equipment. Remember, excitement weakens barriers. Here's an example of some sample equipment used for certain captive animals. For small carnivores, you use nets, pole syringes, blow dart equipment, crates, and squeeze cage. For hoofstock, you use projectile guns and darts, blow dart equipment, and crates. For small mammals, use nets, surgical gloves, pole syringes, blow dart equipment, crates, and squeeze cage. For reptiles, use net bags, plastic tubes, snake tongue, and snake hook. For amphibians and fish, you use nets and gloves. Now what to consider for the animal is the individual restraint history, behavioral aspects, hierarchical status, and health status. Be aware of territory and amount of stress. For behavioral, Husbandry training, desensitization, and apparent conditioning are used to facilitate or perform a procedure. The animal must fully cooperate for this to work. It takes lots of prep time. For the psychological level of restraint, it is using the knowledge of an individual or species persona to restrain the animal. Knowledge of the anatomy or physiology, knowledge of flight distance, diminishing senses, the handler's confidence level, and scare and intimidation. Physical is any circumstance where physical force is used to restrain the animal. Hands, herding boards, shields, nets, and poles. For mechanical is a physical restraint system which limits the animal's movement while protecting the handler. We use squeeze chutes, drop chutes, boxes, and cages. Types of chemicals used for when restraining animals. There's a narcotic, or opiates, which causes loss of consciousness and alleviates perception of pain. Then there's dissociative anesthetic, cyclohenaxamines, which dissociate mental state from environmental stimulation. And then there's the tranquilizer, which is phenotiazin, benzondiazin pine, and imidazol, imidazol, yeah, which produces calmness and relaxation. The delivery systems used to deliver these chemicals can be delivered orally or by vaporizer, handheld syringe, pole syringe, blowgun, or dart gun, also known as dart rifle.
During treatment, you must be aware of the position of the body, the eyes, the respiration, temperature, control, pre-release and release, and post-release complications of the animal. So final thoughts. Restraint is necessary. Perform events safely and efficiently. Understand your role and stick with your role unless told differently. And now I am finally finished with this video.